Based on how many years you have been working in the software industry, I can tell that you must be earning at least this much every year. Did I get it right? If you're earning anything less than how much you should be earning, then you are definitely underemployed. Is this the first time you're hearing about this term? Don't worry. Today, we are going to decode what it means to be underemployed. And if you stick around till the end of the video, you'll have a fair idea what needs to be done to get out of this career situation. If you're new to the channel or haven't yet subscribed, click on that bell icon right away to stay updated with most practical strategies and actionable tips to take your career to new heights. So what is underemployment? Is it the same as being unemployed? The answer is no. Unemployment means that you don't have a job and are actively looking to get employed. On the other hand, underemployment means being employed in a job that requires low skill and does not pay you well. If you look up the term on Wikipedia, this is what you will see. Underemployment is the underuse of a worker because a job does not use the worker's full skills. If you know someone who falls under this category, share this video with them right away because the following parts of the video could change their lives. If you're still not sure how to recognize whether you're underemployed or not, let's see how you can measure it for yourself. Number one, how would you rate the quality of the work you're doing? Think about the kind of work you do and the value you add to the company. Are you satisfied with the work? If you're not 100% confident about your answer, hold that thought and let's look at another factor. Your CTC versus your experience. How much are you earning for the years of experience you have? Is it on par with the rest of the people in your industry? Talk to your friends or use this table to find out where you stand. Maybe your work doesn't feel meaningful anymore or the industry and the technologies have evolved. All this could mean that you're stuck in your career. Checking the two things, which are the quality of your work and your CTC versus your years of experience, this will give you a fair idea of whether you are underemployed or not. Here's a quick question for you. In the past, how many times have you thought about changing your job? Once, twice, every other month? And how many times did you do something about it? If your answer is zero, you're at the right place. Most time, this realization of being stuck in your career is just a fleeting thought. Very few actually do something about it. If you've made it this far in the video, like the video and let us know in the comments what exactly about your work makes you want to change your job every now and then. Let's get to the bottom and try to understand why it has been so difficult for you to take that step forward in your career or why some people don't even realize that they have to upgrade their careers. But before that, let's look at the five major signs which would tell if you're stuck in your career or if you're underemployed. One, your potential is much greater than your job. You often think of being more skilled and competent than what your work demands for you. You're not challenged enough in your current role. Two, worried about job safety. Constantly worrying about your job safety. Do you think a bunch of freshers or juniors may replace you anytime and that makes you want to give your best in your job? Living in fear is a definite characteristic of being underemployed. As the job you're doing doesn't require much skills, this fear might drive you to a poor work-life balance and a career burnout. Three, no transferable skills. Are your current skills going to get you hired for another job? If your skills today are too specific to a project or the tech used in your current company, it's going to make you less employable for another job. Once you recognize the skills you need for the job you want, don't just let that be a thought. Start upskilling yourself and level up your career. Four, not learning new things. Ask yourself this question. Did you learn anything new in the past six months? It could be processes, technology, domain, anything. If that's not happening in your work, you are definitely stuck. And five, is your work repetitive in nature? Are you doing the same thing over and over again? Doing the same work day in and day out could be a drawback to your career. Sure, it might feel quite comfortable now, but eventually the lack of growth is going to leave you feeling stuck. This could also hurt your earning potential in the long run. Do you relate to any of these major signs? If your answer is yes, hit that thumbs up and let's continue to see why you haven't changed your career yet or did not even realize that you are underemployed till now. Underemployment is a very common thing in the IT industry. And so even the companies have begun to adopt interesting ways to retain you without making you think too much about your career situation. One of the most powerful ways for the companies to make you stay for long is by providing on-site opportunities. On-site used to be attractive in the early 2000s, not so much now. Also, the ratio of employees on-site versus offshore is very skewed. More importantly, you're left to the mercy of your manager or your company. So this might not happen ever. But you know what? This strategy absolutely works for the companies and you know it. So if you want to move to a different location, there are better ways to do it. You can either get into a good company and transfer internally later, or if you have the right skills, you can directly apply for jobs outside India. Another interesting thing that companies do is give away performance rewards, star of the month, employee of the year, etc, etc. These rewards aren't bad, but ask yourself, does it really have an impact on your career growth? Sure. 
it will raise your morale and make you feel better than your peers. Does that change the fact that you are still underemployed? Similar to performance rewards, another thing that keeps you from changing your jobs is the appraisal. When your manager promises you a promotion or a salary bump in let's say next six months, what do you do? You immediately start working towards getting the promotion or hike in salary. But do you ever stop to wonder, is it really worth it? Think about what is the best raise you can get in this underemployed job, 25%, at best 40%. And then what? The moment it is given for a year, you know what the next two years are going to look like. It's not going to change your career trajectory and the real problem is not with your company or your manager it's about the work you do and every job has a salary ceiling what i mean by salary ceiling is say you're paying your cook 2000 rupees for 20 meals let's assume your cook makes exceptional food and deserves extra thousand rupees per month after that would you be willing to increase their pay just because they're very good at their job no right for the same skill your cook's salary has touched the ceiling and it has no scope to go above that. Same goes with your work as well, which is why it is important to update your skills and keep moving forward in your career. If you're still not convinced about taking charge of your career, think about this. After 10 years of your career, would you rather be making 40 plus lakhs per annum or 12 plus lakhs per annum? It's not too late to get 40 plus lakhs per annum by year 10. Even if you're three to four years in your career and are earning anything less than six lakhs per annum, you can easily shift to a job that pays you two times your current salary. And from then on, your salary would continue to grow than it would in your current position. It may not double every year, but still would be a significant growth in your earning potential over a period of time. Tell me now, do you still want to sit on the thought of changing your job? If you have made up your mind to shift, your next step is to gain the skills software companies are looking for. Options are plenty. You could explore the idea of doing an MBA and getting into managerial roles, consider product management, learn data science, cloud, get hands-on with software development skills. Whatever it is that you pick, Think about what excites you the most. Take time to explore different skills before locking on the type of skills you wish to pursue. Talk to the people who have done similar transitions in the past and understand how their journey has been. At the same time, don't give in to FOMO. You don't have to do something just because everyone is talking about it or you have taken a particular direction in your career. Be practical and focus on what you see yourself doing in the next 10 years. If you think this video has helped revive your career, do share it with your friends or family members, letting them know which part of the video helped you take charge of your career. More importantly, let this not be yet another time you just thought about changing your career. Now that you know how to break this pattern of staying stuck in your career, start taking action today.